Pokuma Media's Polity Amtabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack the Stephen Murray's memoir. Welcome, Raymond. Thanks very much. Why do you think the Stephen Murray's book is so important, and why do you say that Murray's is eccentric? Most of the prison memoirs are very standardized. You know, people don't talk about themselves. They say, I put the fuse down and it didn't go off and I had to go back. And they tell you about all sorts of things that explosives experts know about, but they don't really let the reader in to understand who the person is who's telling the story. They don't express their fears, their anguish, their happy moments of happiness and things like that. So that's why I think it's a different sort of book. It's very different from what I have done as a prison book. And you ask me why I say he's eccentric. He talks to birds, you know, like a bird is in the sky and the bird, he says, says to him, uh, you are hypocrites. You are hypocrites. Or a bird will say something else to him. And he then goes and looks these things up in the concise Oxford Dictionary to make sure he's heard correctly. So he's doing things like that. And um, someone said that I also had a bird in prison, so I mustn't talk about that. But I didn't. I didn't talk to. I didn't talk to the bird and look in the dictionary what the bird said. It was a, a different situation. He did it outside of prison, not inside prison. But I think. Uh, you asked me, yeah, about eccentricity. You know, he's um, he's a rounded person. When you're representing the liberation movement, you tend to um, feel that you must appear dignified, you must appear fear- fearless, you must take on whatever you ask to do and things like that. Now, he has a whole lot of other things. Before he joins the uh, MK, which he tells the reader about how he grew up as a young boy with a very similar background to a lot of others, uh, canings, a lot of physical punishment and victimization, all sorts of things like that. So what I think is useful about what I'm calling eccentricities is, well, they're not really eccentricities in the sense that some people can identify with that. And the book, as I mentioned in the review, was compiled from what people posted on Facebook and his replies. Now, I've never heard of anyone creating a book out of in that way, but it works. So that's what I think is different about this book. Um, from many others. And you suggest that one does not necessarily lose control in situations of an imbalance of power, as in police interrogation. So what is your reasoning? Yes, you know, I use a word reify. That means turn a person into a thing. So when there's an imbalance of power, the powerful person or people can make you not a human being, but a thing. Now, what I'm arguing is that even under torture, even under very difficult situations, you can claim your own agency, your own decision-making. Now, when you're in a room full of apartheid security police, the balance of forces is very unfair. You don't easily exercise your agency because these people are um, much more powerful than you. But what Stephen Maria shows, and I've also mentioned this, not so much in my book, but in an article, before he goes into the interrogation, uh, an African policeman says to him, they really want to break you now, so you must decide what you really can't tell them. You tell them other things, but don't tell them that. Now, you have this, you know, you are the only person who's got the information, and they've got to get it out of you 
somehow or other, whether by electric shocks or beating or making you stand, depriving you of food, all these sorts of things. Now, in my own case, and I think it's true of Stephen Maria's case, is that we decided not to tell them some things, even though through torture, Stephen was not tortured, but he had very difficult conditions. But through torture, you are in a very disadvantageous position compared with uh, those who are interrogating you, but you have not lost all capacity to make your own decisions. The fact that you withhold some things is a claiming of your agency that you are not reified, that is not made into a thing. So that was what I meant, but it doesn't just apply to interrogation. It applies to everyone in relation to someone who has more power than them in a marriage, in an office situation, in a whole lot of other situations. You don't all, you don't lose all capacity. Maybe your capacity is not what you would like it to be because of this imbalance of power, but you don't surrender all your power. And lastly, Raymond, why is it so remarkable to use Facebook postings as the basis for a book? I've, uh, I mentioned it before because I've never heard of it happening before. And in my own case, I'm on Facebook. But, you know, half the people who are Facebook friends on 90% are not my friends. They just go onto Facebook. Some of them make comments that irritate me, but I don't com I don't reply. I say nothing. Sometimes I do comment. For example, if it's my own article that they're commenting on, sometimes I don't comment, sometimes I do comment. But most of the time they're commenting on other things that I've posted and they make very irritating comments. Now, I don't see why I must engage with these people, why I must tell them about my health or how I woke up this morning and didn't feel happy or rested and was depressed and all this. I keep quiet. I keep those things to myself or I say them to my real friends, not the Facebook friends. For a lot of other people, Facebook is a place where they like to engage with one another. And that's why I'm saying it is unusual. I've never heard of a book like this. Stephen, Maria and myself are very different people. So we come from, both come from the struggle of being very different people. And he has made something out of these engagements, which I never tried. Maybe I'm wrong, but I still won't do it if I go to jail again. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about the Stephen Murray's memoir.